God is good. So we are starting our, our inner healing session and uh, I want to start with introduction. The first session I call it introduction. Uh, those of your Bibles have them ready. You'll assist me reading uh, the, the Word of God. Introduction. I want you to think of uh, your own guidance. I want you to think of your television set. And you are sitting in your house, and you have your remote, and you want to choose a channel you want to watch. How would you feel as the owner of that gadget when you put a particular channel, it changes itself and goes to another channel? How would you feel when you want to watch news, it goes to a soap opera? Or maybe it is your car. You enter your own car. Let's assume it's automatic. You know, now that you have a Google Maps to start, and you're able to say, I'm going to this place, it says, turn to the left, turn to the right. And you want to go to the big store, you find yourself in God. Yeah. You'd feel bad. You're not achieving what you want to achieve. When you buy a mobile phone, when you buy any gadget today, the most important thing that you look for is for the manual. What is the purpose of the manual? Is to understand the brains of the creator of that item. To understand how he wanted it to be used. To understand how to get the maximum value out of that gadget. And without it, you underutilize that gadget. Maybe you use it. Use it in the wrong way. So we need a manual. The same thing for your life and my life. For us to get maximum value. For us to be able to live for what the Lord created you, we need a manual. His word. The way you feel when you tell your car, I'm going to Livingston and it goes to Nola, is the same way your creator feels when he has a path for you, when he has a purpose for you. He's given you free will and you choose a different purpose. It's the same way. That's how God feels. When he's created you to worship me, and I decided to worship money, for example. The heart of God is heart. God has feelings. Jesus one time cried when he saw his friend Lazarus in the tomb, and people cried. Jesus wept. God has feelings. And he tells us in John chapter 15, verses 16 and following, you did not choose me. Jesus is telling us. You did not choose me, but I chose you, I called you, I chose you, I saved you, I led you, and I sent you to and bear fruits. Fruits that will last. How does God feel when you don't bear fruits that will last? How does Jesus feel after the suffering, the beating, as in the beating of God, the pain, the terror? The crown of God spoke his head, blood gushing out from all over the body, being every part of his clothing removed, that he remains naked, naked, naked. The humiliation, putting him on a cross, putting nails on him mercilessly, screaming in pain, lifting up on the on the on, on, on the cross, hanging on nails, naked. The whole world is looking at him. Dying for your sake and my sake. How does he feel the purpose for which he died if he's not accomplished in your life and my life? <clears throat> Just like you look at that car of yours or that television set, if you tell it to go to those channels, the doctor will say, This thing is good. this thing is sick. When we don't feel according to the purpose that we God has called us, we are sick. So when you talk about inner healing, it's about healing and living for that purpose for which we call you. God knows why he called you, and he has a much better plan for us than we think, and that we have for ourselves. So we hope in this <coughs> retreat, the Lord is going to touch us and heal us. 
because he has good plans for us. The Sirach 15, verse 15, 17, the verse that I say that the Lord says when he created us, he gave us the freedom to choose. And if we choose, we can obey his ways. And he says, before you there is fire and water, stretch out your hand and choose. Pick whatever you want. When you pick fire and man, and many of us, if not all of us, at one point or another, we have picked fire and man, and we've been crying. We are here because we are wounded. No single human being is minor wounds. We are all wounded in one way or another. And the wounds in us affect who we are. They affect our decision making. They affect our thinking. They affect our rationale. They affect our, our entire life. The wounds. When you hear a girl say, I will never get married, it is not coming from nowhere. That girl was wounded by a man somewhere. And she has generalized all men are bad. That's why she'll never get married. The decision is out of the wounds because the inner person is wounded. And we are going to be looking at the inner person for the better part of this uh, retreat. The inner person, I'll explain much more later. But for now, I want us to start with the first Thessalonians read it yesterday. I want us to read it again. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 19 to 24. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 19 to 24. You're there? Can you tell me something, please? You can read it for me. My sister here. So we're going to get it first. Sorry. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 to 24. Listen to the word of God. Do not quench the spirit. Do not quench the spirit. Do not suppress the spirit of God. Not any other spirits. Because we are three spirits. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the evil spirit. We have the human spirit. God is telling you not to quench the Holy Spirit of God in you. When he created us, he breathed into us his Holy Spirit. So he's saying, don't quench him. Don't suppress him. Don't oppress him because he's going to live as he did for Adam and Eve. As he dies when this world turns out not to be the temple of Christ. Continue. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Continue. Test everything. Retain what is good. Test everything. Retain what is good. Even in this retreat, keep what is good. I'm praying to God that everything will be good. You know, in the present world, like I said yesterday, the devil has really played into our minds that whenever we hear man of God, woman of God, we believe with our whole heart and we follow many false prophets. And we are wounded. People are planted seeds that never grow. People are doing crazy things in the name of God. The name of Jesus has become like a commercial tool. People are misusing it. People are almost hating Christianity because of the things that the so-called Christians, the so-called prophets are doing. People are hating God. In Kenya, we have a massacre that is going on that I mean, they are discovering a prophet who was forcing people to fast until they die. Now when they fast, they die fasting, they'll meet Jesus face to face. Graves have been discovered. Over 200 bodies have been exhumed in the name of God. People are selling their property, taking him money. You, you don't need money. You want to meet God, but he needs money. You sell your property, he's buying machinates in the name of God. So that's why I've been told to taste 
And indeed, when you go to the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 1 and following, the Lord says, Do not trust everybody who says they are the Spirit of God. Test them, because many false prophets have been unleashed in the world. So we need to taste. Even as I teach you, you need to test, you need to ask God. Is he truly a man of God? What is teaching? Is this sound Bible teaching? Or is he teaching as his own thing from being? We need to test the spirit. Don't trust everyone. I want to tell you today that doubting a person, doubting a spirit is not sin. It is not sin. Continue. Refrain from every kind of evil. Refrain. Refrain from every kind of evil. When we are living an evil life, we are not living in accordance with the plan of God. It's like your television set. You sit on a channel, it goes to another channel. You'll be crazy, you'll be mad about it. It's like you're automatically telling me, I'm going to Lusaka, and it goes to another town. You'll be mad. You'll be, what's wrong with you, my car? That's how God feels when you live an evil life. God has told us, I want you to follow the way, the truth, and the life. We live it before another one. It is like that car which is sick. It is like that TV set which is sick. So if you know that you are not on the path of God, in any way, you know that you're sick. And we need a new life of God. Continue. May the God of peace himself make you perfect, perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved, blameless, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the perfect God make us all again, heal our entire being. Three areas I mentioned. Body, soul, and spirit. That is what makes a human person. Body, soul, and spirit. I will talk about this more. Continue, just finish. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. Brothers, pray for us too. The one who calls you is holy. And it's called the use of holiness. It's talk of a uh, body, soul, and spirit. If I could go three cycles, the outer layer is your body. You know, when you 
talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit, allowing the Spirit of God into our life, you are only becoming the temple of the Holy Spirit. It means not just the work of baptism. You know, many Christians think that you become Christian by the work of baptism. It is not the water that makes you a Christian. Water only touches the outer layer. It only touches the skin. Not even the hell. If you read Acts chapter 2, verses 37 39, on Pentecost Day, when Peter started preaching, and the people who were listening to him were attacked the heart, and they started asking Peter the apostle, What should we do to become like you, to become Christian? Peter told them, Repent of all your sinful ways and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins. Repentance is for forgiveness. When you repent and you are baptized, you are forgiven your sin. So the water in baptism signifies cleansing. The water in baptism signifies cleansing. The same reading continues to say, after you are baptized and you are forgiven your sin, it says, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He's the one who makes you a Christian, not the water. I live in Mombasa. If water was to make people Christian, we are always in the ocean to eat. Everybody there will be a Christian. Most of them are not. So it is not water. It is not beautiful water or lack of water. Water is significant. It's a symbol in baptism, not the main thing. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He is the one who makes you a Christian. Indeed, if you read Romans chapter 8, verse 9, the word of God says, If indeed the Spirit of God is in you, you will no longer be led by the flesh, but by the Spirit. If He is in you and me, we will not be led by the flesh anymore, but by the Spirit of God. And the acts of the flesh are obvious. The acts of the Spirit are obvious. If fornication is not only being, adultery, cheating, jealousy, bribery, it is obvious who is sitting here. It is not the Spirit of God. If you bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is here, your spirit and the Spirit of God becomes good. When the Holy Spirit is there, you will bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and we all know them. Love. Peace. And I mean love. I don't mean lust. What is in the world is lust, not love. I love you, I love you. I am regretting that I leave you. Was that love? No. Love does not injure. Love does not cause pain. Love is kind. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 13. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is forgiving. Love, true love. God is love. So whatever we describe in the world, they are like putting other people in the hand to have bitterness. It is not love. It is lust. The devil wants to confuse the people of God by taking the terms of God, using them in the opposite direction. It is not love. They are love, they are love, they are love. To a large extent, it's not love. Of course, there are those who truly love each other. And when you love somebody, you cannot cheat upon that person. That will not be love. You're still cheating that person. Cheating a person in marriage is like taking a knife and stabbing the person at the back. And you say, I love you. That's what I tell the priests and the religious. For us in marriage, cheating is stabbing your partner. For the priests and religious, cheating is stabbing Jesus on the back. It's absurd. The heart of Jesus Christ. Christ. So who's sitting here is the question. Baptism in the Holy Spirit means when you are baptized and you repent you allow the Spirit of God not only to penetrate your body, 
but to penetrate into your soul, penetrate into your spirit, and sit with your spirits. You are completely baptized, submerged in the person of the Holy Spirit. That is what baptism in the Holy Spirit means. You let go your body to be controlled by the Spirit of God, no longer by mass, no longer by grief, no longer by jealousy, no longer by envy, no longer by the things of this world, no longer by the trends of this world. Just because the trend, the, 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 the trend is meaning, you must put on a meaning. And they're married. Why do I need to see your thighs? I have my married opinion. You need to see your books. <laughs> your body is baptized in the spirit. Your soul is baptized in the spirit. Your spirit is sent to the spirit of God. You wholly belong to Jesus. That time you are healed. If you give Jesus part of your body, but the other part you say, This one, even God will understand. There's one language that God will never understand, the language you see. He will never understand. He died to me now. Because of that, you will never understand that language. In your soul, in your soul, your soul carries your intellect. Your soul carries your emotions. And your soul carries your will. The soul carries your intellect. The soul carries your emotions. And the soul carries or is made up of those three things. Your will. The will power. When you see your power to say no to the devil is reducing. The power to say no to evil is reducing. The devil is killing your soul. When you see that you commit a sin and you don't care, your conscience, your intellect is being killed. Your willpower is being killed and you are sick. So we ask the Lord to heal our whole being. If you receive inner healing, I want to promise you, when you receive inner healing and allow the Spirit of God to penetrate and sit in you, you'll be able to tell the devil, get away from me, Satan. A man will come with a billion quacha, a billion quacha, you'll tell him off with your mind. A lady will come, beautiful as you are, will tell her, you know what? I have my wife. I have my number one. You will not give it because the willpower is there. God says when he created in the beginning, he gave you the power to say yes or no. But he still advises you to choose the way of life. But he does not force you to choose it. The free will is in your soul. When the intellect is sick, and we are going to be looking at the healing of the mind after this session, we are going to see how our minds have been distorted in a big way. How our thinking has been deformed, yet we think that we are. You know, when you meet a drunkard, I don't know what's going to a drunkard is actually moving like this, and he's telling me, I am not drunk. You think I'm drunk? When you meet a man passing, you get a second man. You know this. We think they're okay. And that is the best thing about By the way, we are a little too much. But we go. A man passing is not connected in the streets. If people start running and you also start running, you run away. Of our mothers. 
the world, the human being, they have never become proud as they are. I think they are proudest. And pride is of the devil. You know, when you go back to King Saul, the fasting of the the fasting of the of the Hebrews, of the Jews, in first Samuel chapter 15, verses 12 to 23. So when he became king, first Samuel chapter 15, verse 12 to 23. When he became king, he didn't know how to rule. He depended on God. So he allowed the spirit of God to lead him. Everything's from the way. Who to fight? The princess are coming. God will let you. He he allowed God to be here. When you depend on God, you allow God to be here. When they come to the people next team, the Lord will start using this song and leave on God. You are alone. Faith and wisdom must go together. So Saul depended on God so much, but as a Christian was rejected. Do you know you can continue being a religious sister was rejected? Do you know you can continue being a priest was rejected? King Saul continued being a king but was rejected. David was already anointed as king. If it is not God sitting here in your spirit, you are rejected. 
Jesus there is so that we will see back eternal life. What gives us life is the Spirit of God in us. When the Holy Spirit comes, when the Spirit is here, He leaves you. No one has ever said, where is the Christ is a new creation? The old is not the new son. He leaves your soul that you become a living being. He leaves your body that you can be able to control your body things and do only what pleases. God is good. All the time. All the time. And all the time. God is good and that's his nature. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. What does the Bible say? It says.
The reason he concentrated on the body, he did not focus on his soul and spirit. He was very okay, party after party after party after party. What you want is the present world, just party. When you party, you feel like you're on top of the world. But the rich Holy Spirit is here and he say, my brother, my sister, you would rather change here and fire forever. His spirit is pleading for us. He said, please, Father Abraham, tell Lazarus to pour one drop of water upon me. I am in torment, not for Kenya, but forever. And Abraham tells him, I'm sorry. The time to change was when you were in Zambia, in Lusaka. That was the time to change. Father said it yesterday. Don't procrastinate, don't postpone some things. Because in heaven, you will not be able to leave. If anything, <laughs> you will not be able to enter heaven. So let me say in hell, you know me. It's now. In heaven or hell, there is no works of mercy. Who needs mercy there? No. Who needs food there? Who needs your water there? The rich will say, pour some water, and Abraham is telling me, between you and us, there is a big trend, and no one can go to your side. Neither can you come to our side. The time to change your friend in Lusaka as St. Dominic said. I said, okay, then, then send it to my brother and sister who are in the church today. Tell them this place is horrible. May they, may, may they receive in and heat and allow the Spirit of God to sit in them so that they don't come here, but they make it to the town of Job. And maybe some of us still don't have it in the hands, unfortunately. The good thing, the Lord does not force. My wife is to preach. Accept it, okay. Reject it. Jesus said, It is not you see the rejected, it is me. That is the comfort. He will tell you that this is your part. They are glad it is not in your hands. And then the rich fool says, Maybe if Lazarus goes there, a man from the dead, they will believe. But that tells him, No, 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 they will not, I hope it is not the sun. And for sure, Jesus came. For sure, Jesus suffered. For sure, Jesus died. For sure, Jesus resurrected. For sure, they saw him going to heaven. But humanity is still not there. So Abraham was. So if you are going to fear what they feel the good in home, something is set for a time, and not to feel what you need, a time, then our minds are upset that we see. A human being is this three facts. Jeremiah 1, verse 25 says, Before you conceived in your mother's womb I knew you. That means you existed. Even if it is the mind of God, you're not an afterthought. That's why the kingdom of God is nothing like unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like that. Because that child you're calling unwanted, God knew before it entered that way. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a rape case, rape is bad, rape is horrible, rape is painful, the act is bad, but the child belongs to God. You are not calling. Those who are killing, those who are doing abortions, you are sick. How can you feel and not even care? Nowadays, we talk to young girls in Kenya, 20 years, Sheikh Adal has aborted five times and it, she looks at you straight in the eye. She's not even worried. This place is full of demons. That's why she's not worried. She's being consumed by the devil. How can you feel fighting but you don't care? It is not normal. We be deformed. That's why right. you remember those days when you teach at the first time. When you say the light to your mother or your mother, you could not even face her. You could not face her. Where did the baby go? We don't care. A husband will shoot a wife to the face. Or a wife to the other to the face. That's just The consciences are dying. The soul is being killed by the enemy. 
want to ask God for this four five days, what day is the day? The Lord will heal us and resurrect our soul and our whole way. Our intellect. When your intellect is sick, you can imagine your reasoning. No wonder they didn't come and tell you LDBTQ, how was it all like that? The intellect is impaired. When the emotions are wounded, they are sick. You make irrational decisions. When your willpower is killed, you cannot say no to sin. In fact, you will please the devil, brother, to this God, and you will be okay. You will say, this is the way of it. And justify. The other day I sat with a Protestant lady, she used to be Catholic, and uh, we were traveling on the train from Mufasa to Nairobi. We talked so many things, and then uh, she asked me about my life, and I didn't want to start, so I had to share my testimony. Oh, you know, Catholic Jehovah, yes. I used to be Catholic, but I decided I was not getting anything there. I decided to move to the church as well, the spirit is so, all. So the most people are very Catholic. Yeah, the Catholic church, you know, she said those things. Then I don't know, we talked about my family. We are 10 boys, one girl, one mother. Say, what? We said something about uh, abortions, how it's killed. Say, it's not killing. You have to start looking at the context in which the Bible is written. So now we're even taking the Bible to look at the cartoon justified. Then the person is because we are living, we can kill. So rubbish. We'll talk about it in the next session. There's nothing to justify. We have created the environment for giving back to the time. Because sex has become like a bear. Even small children. So when they give back, why should we complain? We are not following the will of God. We think we are joining ourselves. But the rich fool is telling us, please be wise. A human being, the Lord says, before you are conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you. God knew you. In your mother's womb, you are given the body what you can see. That's where the Lord put the ear where it is. That's where the Lord put the eye where it is. That's where the Lord put your hair where it is. Look at the name of the it is all the way you have to live by your being to yourself. Beauty has become another God. You can be late for one because you are still doing like this. Then you come to one and say, Everybody to stop looking at this and look at you. So in your mind, That carries the living. The body is not true. The body is a container. St. Paul calls it a tent. It's a container that God has enabled to carry you. My name is Stephen. Let me ask a question. The day I will die, who will you marry? Stephen. Will you marry Stephen? Will you marry Stephen? What will you marry? The body of? So you don't marry Stephen. So how will Stephen be? So who is Stephen? So Stephen is not the body, you bury his body. So you will never die, you will only bury your body. So what dies is this container, this lives forever, by the intense to heaven or death. That is the question. So the body is not the real you, the body is just the content, it's a box. The real you is the soul and spirit. People are suffering because they don't know who they are. We've lost our identity as human beings. We think we are the body. That's why people are focusing on the outside, but not the inside. You know, the Lord, when he's talking to the Pharisees and he calls them blind Pharisees, why does he call them blind? He tells them, you wash the cup on the outside, but the inside is filthy. I remember asking a question, let me ask it again. If you came to my house and found that I made some tea and I'm drinking, you pay the same the grace, I sat with you, you taste the same wine. See, you mean you're such a good cook. I said, yeah. Even there's some samosas, there's some sausages, there's some, you know. But would you like some? I said, yeah, yeah. Then you come and wash your hands. If you walk to my kitchen, for whatever reason you go to the kitchen, you see that the pot which I made the tea, and it's clean, clean. And you're so happy, you say, wow, what a hygienic man. But when you go closer to wash, 
you realize that inside it has not been washed for one year. The outside is family clean, but the inside, all the shima, those things that remain on the side, the soup, chicken soup, the, 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 the porridge, no one of the is so delicious. <laughs> and if we're in one chance, and if say the place, when you go back, will you continue to take it? No, why? Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to, to 31. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to, uh, uh, chapter, verse 28 to 31. The Lord God, Jesus answers and says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That is the only time that you are a normal human being. Any less of that, we are sick. When the internet is clear, that means there's a little bit of madness. People say, only what matters, what differs is the degree. When your emotions are wounded, when you're sick in your emotions, you make unrealistic decisions. You are unstable. When your willpower is wounded, you don't have the power to say no, even to your friends. And you know it is the wrong thing. But you cannot stand up against them and tell them, you know what, that I will not do. They will come to death. So the question is, do you want to be healed? Do you want the emotions to be healed? Do you want the will power? To be able to know this is the right thing and it's not like it. If you need a million people, <coughs> it's the opposite. 
That's why we are here. It will depend on one thing. For you and me cooperating with the grace of God. Because God does not force himself. It's entirely the grace of him. Each individual. You may have come as a couple. You may have come as a group. But the issue of salvation, the Lord says two will be in one bed, husband and wife. One is taken. I can tell you my wife. I hope we are hopeful. Because at that time, if I'm not even hold on to my leg, the physical will be buried. My faith cannot take up, it can help to be able to achieve heaven. But the decision remains us. Our dear Lord and King, merciful Creator, we seek thy mercy and forgiveness of thy sins, of our sins and weaknesses. Touch our body, touch our soul, touch our spirit. We are wounded beings. We need your healing touch. Heal our intellect that has been impaired greatly by the things of this world, by the teachings of this world, by the trends of this world, by the allures of this world. Our minds are impaired and we live as though as we know. But today we've discovered we know nothing. We know very little. And without you, we are nothing. You created us for yourself. You created us to live in us. But we have lost you in a big way. Our intellects are impaired. May you touch our minds, touch our intellects and repair it. Restore us, O Mary God. So we live in accordance to your holy will. Heaven, Lord and King, our emotions are broken. Our painful past history, our relationships, our failures have broken us. We are truly broken. We need your healing touch. Touch our hearts. Touch our soul. Touch our emotions. Repair them. Restore them, God. Heal us, God. Deliver us from every pain. Remove every form of pain and bitterness in us. Remove anger from us. Make us well again. Release your inner peace, your divine peace. Release your patience and perseverance. And most importantly, God, as you heal our intellect and emotions, heal our free will, the willpower, the power to say yes to you, no matter what, and the power to say no to the devil, and the ways of the devil, not to peer pressure, not to bad company, not to anything that displeases you. Release our power, Lord, so we are able to stand with you. We are able to be true witnesses. As you say in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that when the Holy Spirit come, you receive power. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, up to the ends of the world. A witness does not change the stand. A witness remains with the truth. You are the truth. You are the life. You are the way. May we remain with you even in the face of death. As it was to the apostles after receiving the Holy Spirit. You tell us in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and 12. That they were ready to die. They testified and won over every situation. Even death. Because when they died in the body, they resurrected the spirit. They live with you today. They are saints. They were ready to die, but not, not change their stand. They were true witnesses, and this is what you are calling us to be. As Christians, those you are baptized, we are called to be true witnesses, Lord. Release that grace upon us to be true witnesses. The willpower, the power to say no, the power to conquer Satan and sin, so that we live as a healed people, generation. We live as a new creation. You tell us whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Release the newness. May we live that renewal in our mind, in our soul, in our spirit, even our body, to conform to you, but not to the ways of the world. We thank you and bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, trust, and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I wish to sincerely thank you for tuning in into this channel, YouTube channel of Steve Wa Yesu. And if you like the teachings on this uh, uh, channel, you may click on the like uh, icon and also on the subscription button and on the notification bell so that every time a new teaching is uploaded on this channel, you get a message on your phone. Thank you so very much. I may God bless you. Bye-bye.